In this video, we're going to be covering removing and rebuilding the fuel pump in the Daimler Ferret. Now, first things first is to try and get access. Um, you need to remove the left-hand escape hatch and the left-hand battery box. And uh, that will give you access to the engine steady bracket, which you can see I'm just removing here. Now, one of the bolts you can get access to with a spanner and the other one it's probably easier to get access through the fuel drain hatch in the bottom of the hull with a ratchet like this um, you can just about get in there and get access onto that and then uh, you can loosen the steady bracket off and remove that from the vehicle we're going to need to remove that to give us access under the fuel tank so we can reach in and remove the pump itself so access is basically by laying down next to the gearbox. In the ferret you can reach in over the drive shaft, get an arm through this small access space to the fuel pump. And you have to remove the fuel unions on the top and bottom. And uh, a bolt, or should I say a nut, on the left and right hand side. So here you can see the bottom fuel union. You only need a couple of standard spanners for this a 13 16th and a half inch so uh, access is tight in there but it is doable so you can see I've removed the bottom fuel union here very limited on space in here so uh, it's difficult to get a good angle so you can see I've got the bottom fuel union undone and the top fuel union there. And then it's just a case of reaching in and undoing the bolt on each side of the fuel pump. And uh, with those undone, the fuel pump is uh, simply withdrawn from the engine and removed out through the same access space. So you can see once the fuel pump's removed, there's the gasket, and you can just see in the back of the hole the uh, push rod that comes off the crankshaft. You can see it just pop out a little of the engine there. And there's the fuel pump removed, ready for a rebuild. And uh, we'll be covering that in a minute. Always worth uh, taking a few pictures and images of a pump um, before you uh, do a rebuild on it so you know the orientation and the way it goes. And uh, here's one last shot in through that small access space to uh, show the two studs which hold the pump onto the block. Hopefully that gives you an idea of uh, how to remove it. Surely the video is not great, but uh, not a lot of space in there. So I've cleaned up the outside of the pump and it's ready to be taken apart. And we'll see what state it's all, uh, all like inside. So it's a fairly simple process. It's just a case of undoing the uh, bolts that hold the various parts of the pump together and uh, unscrewing those out of the pump body. I recommend to unscrew them um, or screw them in when you're removing or refitting them to avoid uh, dragging them through the pump diaphragms. Obviously that's not that important when you're putting the pump apart. That's something to bear in mind when we're putting it back together. So we can see it's still got its label on, dated 1984, which is probably when the uh, pump was fitted originally on the engine. That's when the last overhaul was. So we can pull this off and uh, get access to the top of the bolt so we can remove those. So there's six bolts in all um, that we need to remove and they're all that hold the, uh, the pump body together. So just get those taken out and we'll be able to see uh, what the inside of the pump looks like and what state the gaskets are in. So I'm doing this pump rebuild because I've started to notice a little bit of uh, petrol in the oil on uh, the Damon Ferret. And uh, one of the classic ways in is through a torn pump diaphragm into the sump. So that's the rear cover. And this is the pulsometer diaphragm on the back of the 
pump, which is a thicker diaphragm. And, uh, it's well stuck on, so we'll just try and ease it off with the blade of a knife, just so we can uh, see what condition it's in. And uh, obviously important not to damage the body of the pump. Okay, so there's that diaphragm there. We can clearly see that that diaphragm has gone a little bit porous. It's collected a lot of uh, gunk on there. And we can see a lot of these carbonized deposits. And old uh, tarry fuel deposits in the pump. Now these are um, quite toxic, so take care with those. Try not to handle them and uh, make sure you dispose of them properly. So here we'll just try and separate the body of the pump where the main pumping diaphragms are. Uh, you can see there's actually three diaphragms, I think, in this particular pump. So we can see straight away some more varnish and that in the pump from the fuel. And we can see that the diaphragms don't look in great condition there. Certainly the top one I can see is split and uh, perished. Uh, these are uh, a nylon fabric diaphragm that are coated in a rubber. I don't know what the original um, diaphragms would have been made of on this. Um, but when I refit some diaphragms to this, I think I'm going to make some out of a modern nitrile material and, and maybe even add another diaphragm out of some other material that would be a bit more resistant to uh, modern kind of ethanol containing fuels. So there's a felt washer here on uh, on my pump. Usually I think there's a metal washer at this point and a felt washer in behind. So don't be surprised if you see that. And uh, we've got two metal plates here which sandwich either side of the rubber diaphragms. They're usually held on with a little bit of glue to um, ensure um, the threads in the middle have a fuel type seal. Um, so we'll take uh, take that off. Right, so in the back of the pump here, this doesn't look great. Um, a little bit of uh, oily, milky kind of deposits in there. Could be some water's got in there at some point from, um, from somewhere. Um, the engine oil looked very clean um, on the ferret, so could be a little bit from condensation, could be a little bit of gunk in there from... Uh, the fuel leak um, mixing with uh, with the oil. Um, certainly more modern fuels with ethanol in them tend to um, retain a little bit of moisture in them. Um, so that could be the cause of this. Uh, if you've got any other thoughts, then uh, post in the comments below. So yeah, we can see that uh, these diaphragms are not in too great a shape. Certainly we can see the nylon center of this one and you see where it's cracked and lost the rubber coating you can see this back one has blistered away as well so they're not uh, not in good shape um, have a quick look at the valves here they seem to still be moving freely which is good i have to be very gentle with those um, but uh, yeah there's obviously a lot of uh, deposits and things in the in the pump which will get cleaned up so, yeah, here's one of the mounting plates just showing some of the gunk and mess that's in there. So, yeah, we'll have to get all this uh, bits and pieces tidied up. So we'll finish dismantling. So we remove these retaining rings for the valves, and then we can take the valves out of the pump and inspect those, give them a good clean up and uh, refit them or replace them if necessary, if anything's broken or damaged with them. It's just a case of getting these retaining rings out. There's one. And then we should just be able to gently pop the uh, valve out. There we go, there's one removed. Now the valves themselves can be stripped down further um, and cleaned. So we'll be doing that a little bit later on in the video. Just need to get this other valve removed. These uh, retaining kind of spring um, 
washers or whatever you want to call them that are in here. Give them a little bit fiddly to get out, especially if they've been in there for some time, a little bit of corrosion on them. Um, but you need to be really careful when you're removing them not to damage the valves themselves. So take a little bit of time, try and make sure your tools you're using um, don't slip into the valve, cause any damage, otherwise you will need to replace them. For this I'm hoping to rebuild these rather than put new ones in, so we'll uh, just take a bit of care here trying to get this uh, spring out. So here are the three diaphragms that were removed. So this is the one that was nearest to the engine um, and had the oil um, contact on one side of it from the engine uh, itself. You can see that's blistered and uh, that's caused that to uh, become compromised. This is the central diaphragm and again you can see in places where the rubber has unbonded from the uh, nylon fabric in the middle. So that again is going to be porous and is going to let fuel through. And this is the first diaphragm which is closest to the fuel for the longest time. And again you can see it's had the same thing where it's lost uh, the rubber off of the nylon coating. And uh, that's what's caused the oil, I'm sorry the petrol leaks. And this is the pulsometer diaphragm, which again is the same design, a nylon coated rubber. Um, and uh, again, you can see quite heavy deposits on there from the fuel. And you can see it is bagged out slightly. And uh, it's also, um, I think, gone porous there and let fuel through. We can certainly see through to the nylon. So that's why, uh, why we're rebuilding this pump to resolve all those those issues and problems. So before we can rebuild it, we need to go on and uh, clean some of these parts up. Um, we've obviously cleaned up the outside, so now we can have a little clean round inside. Uh, I'm just using some quite harsh cleaner on this, because um, it's all metal parts now, so a little bit of brake cleaner and a bit of elbow grease, just to get these uh, bits all tidied up ahead of a rebuild. Got a few nylon brushes and things, some wire brushes to remove the old glue from the threads of the um, central spindle there, which holds the diaphragm uh, in place. And uh, obviously the brake cleaner and a little bit of uh, scrubbing with um, brass brush and, and scourers and that sort of thing will remove any varnish from inside the pump. And uh, and I'll clean all those bits of the pump body up. So I'm going to put um, the bits and pieces, the valves and uh, the diaphragm retaining plates and the nuts and bolts and that sort of thing um, into a little bit of brake cleaner in a jar as well and leave those overnight to soak and uh, give those a little bit of a clean up tomorrow. So again, uh, by the magic of video, we'll skip to the next day. So here we are, um, just cleaning up, as I said, um, the body of the pump, removing as much of uh, the varnish and petrol deposits that are inside, and cleaning up the outside of the pump a little bit, and uh, cleaning up all the individual parts. So this is just really uh, make sure there's no debris that we're putting back in the pump that's going to circulate and cause any issues and it'll also make our life a little bit easier when we're putting the pump back together so i've cleaned up all the bolts and the uh, retaining clips there for the valves and uh, just retaining the di cleaning up the uh the diaphragm plates here um, now these in part are a little bit corroded again where we'd sort of seen um, this is the inside of the pump 
um, had a little bit of uh, slight sort of milky oil and a little bit of corrosion in it um, where it's had a little bit of water in it at some point some sort of moisture in it so uh, these need a little bit of clean up um, the internal clips and things are obviously quite straightforward with a, a wire brush I think some of those diaphragm plates we'll have to uh, do a little bit more aggressive cleaning with so I don't know uh, what else we've got so we've got a uh, valve here and we'll uh, rebuild the valves a bit later on as I say uh, we have to get the uh, wire brush going on the drill in this case or if you've got a bench grinder with a wire brush attachment you can clean up the uh, diaphragm plates with that obviously you can get new old stock uh, rebuild kits from places like um, Richard Bannister in the UK um, if you do need them which have all these parts inside it saves you the effort of cleaning up um, the old parts and obviously if you've got anything that's damaged uh, like valves and needs replacing then uh, that's where you can get them from so that's most of the uh, pump cleaned up the remaining items we've got to take apart and clean up are the valves now these can be quite delicate so again be extremely careful using tools to take these apart I'm um, using a pick here to remove the spring clip again from inside the valve and once we've got the uh, spring clip out making sure that the tools don't slip and damage the, uh, the valve itself then we'll be able to check the operation of the spring and uh, check the valve plate itself and the sealing surface of the valve and make sure they're all in good condition uh, if any of those bits are broken or damaged, then uh, we'll have to replace. So we'll take them apart and see what we've got. So we can see the spring here inside. Be very gentle with it. It's very fragile. It's very thin. And make sure it's not broken. It's all in good shape as this one is. And check the sealing surface here doesn't have any major pitting or damage to it again this looks in good shape so I think uh, it just all needs to clean up remove any deposits and varnish again from the fuel and make sure there's uh, nothing going to stop the valve sealing again nicely and we can get it put back together and uh, it'll be ready for rebuilding in the fuel pump so I'm just using a little bit of um, uh, it's a little bit it's scotch bright, I believe. Uh, this is quite coarse scotch bright, um, just to clean the varnish off these parts. Again, you need to uh, be careful with them. A lot of them are quite delicate. They don't require a lot of force to clean them up. And once we've got all this cleaned up and we're happy with it, we can go ahead and rebuild all the different parts. We just need to make sure that the spring is seated properly up inside the uh, retaining clip there, nice and central. And uh, just check its operation of the valve again gently don't want to bend the bottom metal sealing plate and we can reinstall the spring clip inside the valve itself and quite simply just be carefully pushed back in with a screwdriver working your way around Once we're happy that that's seated properly, we can just do a final inspection, make sure we're happy again that the spring is in place and the valve operates as expected. And that's uh, the valve's done. So that's uh, what I've done now and I've already done the other one. So they're ready to go. 
So because we're going to replace the diaphragms with um, diaphragms I'm going to make rather than ones out of a uh, an old stock rebuild kit, I need to know what uh, thickness of diaphragms the standard ones are. So I've got the micrometer out and we can see these are somewhere just below 0.45 of a mil. So uh, they're somewhere between, I think, uh, diaphragm material is usually 0.4 or 0.5. So I'm gonna, I think I'm going to put um, some 0.5 diaphragms in. So I'm just going to check the thicker pulsometer diaphragm. See what this reads as. So this is a little over 1.5 mil. Um, there is a slight, um, very thin paper gasket on the side of the pulsometer diaphragm as well, which I don't think I'll be replacing. I'll just use the modern gasket, uh, the modern diaphragm to uh, make that seal. So uh, most of the diaphragm material I can find is uh, nitrile covered nylon. And I'm not too sure exactly how proof that will be against uh, higher ethanol content in uh, the upcoming E10 fuel. Um, not that I intend to run it in the ferret, but it'd be nice uh, for the diaphragms I'm putting in to have some resistance to it in case somebody in the future puts some in. Um, so what I'm going to do is create the main diaphragms out of um, this nitrile coloured nylon and I'm also going to put a single layer of um, a different material this is uh, Viton A um, which is more proof against uh, ethanol content fuels and uh, hopefully that'll give uh, an extra layer of protection so effectively I'll have a sandwich of the normal, normal uh, nitrile nylon and uh, a single layer of uh, Viton A material in there as well. And uh, the thicker pulsometer diaphragm um, will just be made straight from the, uh, the Viton A material. So uh, that's the idea. So uh, it's just a case of marking out the diaphragms from the uh, various sheets and uh, getting those cut out and uh, using the correct size punch to uh, punch the bolt holes and we'll be ready to uh, fit those in. So those first two diaphragms are the thicker pulsometer diaphragm and I'm going to put a single layer of uh, nitrile nylon in with that one as well and this second set of uh, diaphragms will have the uh, Viton layer in too. So first off rebuilding use a little bit of fuel seal to uh, seal around the fibre washer just to make sure the center of the diaphragms is uh, tight and sealed against any uh, fuel and uh, a little bit around the threads there and put the uh, back plate on and uh, put the sandwich of diaphragms in so you can see the one uh, you can see on top was the uh, Viton and then uh, the other uh, nylon nitrile diaphragms going in and uh, the central nut to hold all of that together and it's just a case of uh, getting those lined up but uh, first what we need to do is get the uh, valves reinstalled in the pump body and this is uh, just a case of inserting those and putting the uh, spring clip back in And just as before, we just need to be careful when we're putting those uh, spring clips back in that the um, screwdriver or whatever tool you're using to do that doesn't slip and uh, damage the, uh, the valves themselves. So uh, just check they're nicely seated and uh, just double check the operation of the valve there. 
and uh, we're ready to carry on. So uh, what we need to do is start to put uh, the pulsometer diaphragm, let's see a uh, phyton A diaphragm and a nitrile nylon layer I've put in behind because the Viton doesn't have any uh, nylon reinforcement so that'll just help to uh, give it a little bit of that reinforcement in behind it and uh, use the bolts through the uh, body of the pump to line those diaphragms up and uh, also to line up the next diaphragms as we put the pump together. You can see I'm just holding the pump down against the spring and winding the uh, bolts back through the diaphragms until we can get the uh, nuts slightly tightened down on those bolts and that just helps the uh, diaphragm to seat properly. And then it's just a case of uh, getting those tightened up and uh, checking the operation of the diaphragm, making sure uh, it's got the full range of movement. And uh, once we're happy with that, we can just finish tightening down the, uh, the nuts and bolts there that hold the pump together. So that's the, uh, the pump all rebuilt, ready to go back into the vehicle. So any keen-eyed viewers might have spotted that I've managed to put the pump together um, slightly incorrectly. This final image shows that the priming handle should be next to the label, the data plate on the pump. So uh, I did have to take it apart one more time and, and just move that round. But uh, just shows um, it's easy to make these mistakes when you're putting uh, these pumps back together. So take care and I hope you found that video useful. And uh, if you haven't already, Please subscribe to the channel for more videos and uh, please like this one as well. Thanks very much.